So how do we sink the ship with the most health in one shot? Let's talk about that. Thank you to Calypso Media for the free game. The first thing that you're gonna wanna do is get friendly with a nation. You will want to get all cozy with the governor of the nation that you want to be friends with. When you select the governor menu from the port screen, You'll see a couple of missions that you can select to complete. This will range from bounty hunters, escort missions, attacking other nations, and just delivering the goods that they need for their town. On the right side of the menu, you will see a number 0 through 5. This will be the reputation with the nation. You only have to be 3 out of 5 for the best cannons. You do not have to be 4 out of 5 or 5 out of 5. Once you're friendly with the nation, you'll want to go to a cannon caster to get your cannons. Also keep in mind that the Carpenter Harbor Master is where you can select your deck tiers, which is how you get more cannons. When you scroll over your cannons, you'll see that there are a number of cannons. This can be 5, 6, 7, and it goes all the way up to 11 with the War Galleon. The number of cannons times our damage per cannon will result in our maximum damage. That is a lot of cannons to keep up with, but I'm going to make this really simple. The Long 9 is the most versatile cannon. It has the best range and accuracy at long range and deals moderate damage, 8 to 10 normal damage, and with a 7 range. And I'm going to equip this on my ship, it'll be easier to show you the differences. So now you see that I have the 88 to 110 cannons. These will be our two weakest cannons, and you'll definitely see that we will never use these. The 12 pounder is only 59 to 99. It doesn't even reach the max damage of the long 9, so we're really not going to mess with this one. The 18 pounder is also the same way, so we will not be looking at this one because it is just way under par in every way. Now the 24 pounder has a 44 minimum damage and a 132 max damage. This is not bad, but you still would want to go with the long 9. The 36 pounder has a higher 66 minimum damage from the 24 pounder and a 121 max damage so this one's also a contender depending on what we want to do. Now this 42 pounder here has a 77 minimum damage right under the 88 and 110 max damage and so you're probably wondering why would we ever use this because these both are long range cannons but the long 9 obviously does higher minimum damage. So what's going on there? What's the difference between Long 9, 36 pounder, and 42 pounder? It just comes down to weight. The Long 9 has 66 weight. That's where the 36 pounder and 42 pounder come in because the 36 pounder is only 44 weight and that 42 pounder is 55 weight. The Long 9 is the best choice for long range combat and of course when we have our skills, which I'll show you in a moment, enhances our long range combat even more. So it's just highly versatile. And then we have the Carronade, only 55 minimum damage but it has a possibility of 143 max damage with a crit hit so like that's crazy but is it worth it hitting the low 55 number well we'll find that out if you're gonna go for short range i recommend the carronade that's the best for range two three and four you also might be thinking, why can't I just have a long 9 and a carronade on each side? Which is possible, you can do that. And if you want an extra tip, you can deactivate your cannons right here to actually see the differences in your strength. Or if you just want to shoot out of one cannon and not waste the long range ammo. But if you try to shoot both, you're most likely missing with one of them. So if you're going to go with two different cannons, at least put two long 9s on one side and then two carronades on the other side. We will see how they are different, and I'm also going to show you some pretty good skills to use to enhance your combat. So now I am parked next to a ship of the line, and I have the carronade on him since this is short range. I have activated precise instructions. At level 3, this enhances 30% of your damage. The carronades have a minimum damage of 55, which is now enhanced to 71 with that precise instruction skill. Highly recommended to get it because 30% damage increase is crazy. When an enemy ship is selected, you'll also see their layout at the top right. You can hover over that red spot to see how many health points they have. And Ship of the Line has 160 here, which is one of the highest in the whole game. The reason I'm pointing this out is because if we can sink this ship in one turn, you can pretty much sink anything you want. Now, Lucky Shot just guarantees the hit. Now, keep in mind that this ship of the line has 160 health but the armor around it adds even more so we can't just do 160 damage we have to do a lot more than that to even hurt it and the carronade does not even come close with the 71 minimum damage and 185 top damage 
However, if we have the Armor Piercer skill leveled all the way up, that does double damage, which raises us to 142 minimum damage and a whopping 370 max damage with full crit hit. Now the amazing thing about this is that it has a high chance to sink the ship in one turn. However, the ship does have 160 health, which gives us 18 points of health that we might not destroy in one turn. Now Armor Piercer is supposed to automatically crit as well, so we did get a really good shot here. Sank the ship of the line that we were targeting with 160 health right through the ship. And we even damaged the other ship of the line since it was in the line of fire. Now that was with the Carronade increased by the Precise Instructions and Armor Piercer skills. Now let's try again but without the Precise Instructions skill so that we don't have that 30% increase of damage. As we did the Armor Piercer skill here, to at least get through the armor, we only did one, the 141 damage. Still a pretty dang good shot, but did not sink in one turn. It has the chance to, but most likely you're not going to do it. And then just for fun, let's increase our attack damage by 30%. Let's hit that lucky shot and see what happens. Does an insane amount of damage unfortunately goes to the armor and then the health. Even if you don't have that armor piercer skill, you're still going to do a ton of damage with the precise instructions increase and the lucky shot. Now we're going to do my favorite, which is the long nine. With the long nine, we have that 88 minimum damage, which of course is not going to affect the ship of the line health yet. I'm not going to buff my damage at all and just do the lucky shot how it is with that 88 to 110 damage. With that lucky shot for that automatic crit, we still did a lot of damage, about 200 damage. Unfortunately, this is the ship of the line we're talking about and we're trying to sink it in one turn. Now what happens whenever we don't buff our strength, but we still use the armor piercer skill to enhance the damage. You can see that the 88 minimum damage went to 176. This is already a clear cutthroat line into that ship. With 160 health points, we're already sitting at 176. That means there's no way that we're not going to sink the ship unless we unfortunately get that 10% chance of not hitting the ship. And there you go, it sank just like a bowling ball. It gets even crazier though, because remember, I didn't even buff this with my 30% attack strength. Now that I have a 30% increase, I already do 114 damage. We activate the armor piercer, and that's already 228 direct health point damage. Unless you are in game where your enemy ships may have a level 3 frame or level 3 tier, 228 is going to sink pretty much any ship in the entire game. Use the long 9 or use the carronade, but don't forget about those buffs. Now that we've talked about how to get the best out of your cannons, check out this video to see what you can do for your upgrades on your ships.